learn more about the basics of doing business here in Ghana. Welcome, Kwabena. How are you? I'm well, yes. I'm well. Yeah, I'm, well. Cool. I'm so happy that you've come to share with us some really pertinent information for those who are interested in coming to the continent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking your time and uh, the sacrifices that you're doing and at least bring me here as well and all that you're doing uh, all over the country. We appreciate it and educating us, showing us places I've been here. I've, I've not been to a lot of places that you have been <laughs> and the courage. Oh, thank you very, very much. Now, can you begin um, telling us a little bit about just a just a brief introduction as far as your background is concerned and what led you up to this moment as far as your channel and what you promote this day? And then take it from okay. here, okay? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so uh, my name is Kobna Obindako. I born in Ghana. I schooled in Ghana, first degree, agri engineering. I'm an entrepreneur. I did second degree in bioprocess engineering, which is which is technically uh, food process engineering. But I'm in Ghana now. Um, I'm in business with my wife. Uh, we have fashion retail in multiple locations in the malls in Ghana. Uh, we, we have done a lot of construction works and engineering works. And uh, we have property development uh, company as well, where we build our own apartment and a little bit of uh, you know two bedroom and three bedroom houses that uh, we sell. I wrote a book, which is uh, Perspective, how to develop the mindset to start and build your own business. And we have YouTube page, Facebook page, and we do some radio uh, programs to help the youth in Ghana uh, to get the right frame of thinking so that they can, they can move on from there. I, I want to stop you just briefly <clears throat> before you continue. Now, you, you spoke about um, uh, the businesses that you have here currently in Ghana. Now, did you yeah. go abroad? to receive the information that you did pertaining to entrepreneurship here in Ghana? No, no. I, I did a second degree, which was in Europe, okay. but that was just oh, short time, one year or so, uh, okay. with my wife there. And we saw no money to start business from anywhere, uh, no connection. It's just pure uh, vim and vigor uh, to start from here. You know, and some of the things that we learned, uh, which has, you know, uh, uh, taken us through uh, up to this point. So uh, purely here, no connection, nothing. So you are organic. You you learn yeah. <laughs> much yeah, of what you know. No. I'm here <laughs> on the soil of Ghana. Okay, got it. Mm. Okay, take it away. Take it away, Kwabena. <laughs> okay. So uh, entrepreneurship, I, I think, is a tool that will help us to develop as a people, especially in Africa. You know, the government structures are there. Uh, but the missing link is where we have to have a lot of system thinking, systemic, uh, maybe some kind of education uh, of our people taking charge of the businesses that we are building all over our continent. So Ghana included, you know, so it's one thing when somebody has a professional experience, professional experience, they have working with in a lot of places and then they happen to just start a business. A lot of those, we call them as startups. You know, they come with some technical expertise and they come with a lot of managerial you know, experience and sometimes even money and sometimes even connections. So somebody has maybe completed engineering. Uh, they, they have, you know, they have worked for maybe five to 10 years in big corporations and then they decide to start a business. That kind of person is entirely different from somebody who is just starting business, sometimes even with no education, no money, no father anywhere, no political connection. The parts are different. I think that the, the the second one, which majority of us would find ourselves in, where we don't have money, we don't have connection, and we just have a dream to build a business. The things that we have to know may be so much, uh, you know, a little bit different from the ones with a lot of expertise and connections and money to even, and sometimes they can even lose the money and they still be stable. Now, we took the parts, not that we had the other option, we didn't have the other option. There was no much technical, except the degree, there was not much technical expertise, no money, no political connection. And we had to build from being a small business to wherever we are now. And some of the things that I think, uh, if you if you are coming to Ghana as a diaspora, some of the things that I think will work well. You know, there's one, there's difference between applying this, these business models in our universities. A lot of them were built on the West. And I don't think that even the kind of education we get here, 
we get a lot of examples and models built with the West in mind, you know, especially when it comes to technology, business, productivity. We, we're still being taught in our business schools, largely, you know, with, with concepts and theories from uh, the other side. But when you hit the ground, it's entirely different. And that's why sometimes to transition, to transition as, as, as a professional like yourself, highly educated, exposed to building a business, uh, there's a lot that you have to learn and there's a lot that you would have to unlearn. If you look at the scape, uh, the landscape of our business, majority of our business people in Ghana, uh, majority of them who have really created something from nothing, largely are not highly in coach, educated from the classroom. I'm not talking of, <laughs> you know, what from the classroom. They have had their information from the ground. The doctors and the lawyers and the engineers that we have here largely have been people who we call, you know, professionals and uh, what they call corporate people. You know, so they are working with the mining companies, the oil companies, the banks, the telecommunication companies. Some of them are working for the government. So there is a there, there's a there's a there's a there's a space that has been filled by the Lebanese, by the Europeans, by the Chinese. You know, and they come in with systems a lot of the times. And they come in, even though it's a startup, they come in starting from a very high level. You know, so they, they have the, they have a model, they are testing it, and then they come in with maybe $10 million, $5 million. You know, they come in push. And before you see it, the business is everywhere. They're employing millions. They all they employ, sorry, thousands or hundreds. Most of us may not have the money. Most of us may not even have the technical expertise. But we still have to fill this gap because... What I believe is that the people who would have to create the wealth for us, with all the resources that we have, the people that we have to have to be in charge are the people from here. They must be in charge of the prosperity. It, it is not right that if you go to the oil sector, you are, you are talking of all these multinationals everywhere. And the, the closest that people get to is where they become managers. You know, Even if they are the CEOs, they don't have much say when it comes to the money. You know, so when you go to the, uh, the retail, the more the, the, the big retailers, where are they? Are they Ghanaians or are they Africans? If you go to the big farms that we have, who are those creating them? If you go to you know the big construction companies, if you go to the, the big mining companies, all this. And that's why I think that we have to wake our people up. The disadvantage that they say is the kind of education that we've been giving. You know, so you are educated largely to go and look for job. That's it. And I think it's all over the world anyway. But for the entrepreneurship, for, for you starting, developing the psyche to start a business from nothing, uh, you have to give that kind of education to yourself. You know, and you have to become aware that I have a first degree in whatever course that you have given me. I probably will be able to produce one or two products, but I still don't have the, 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 the structural thinking in terms of how to build a business. You know, not just even just the structure, the inner talkings, how the the, the the motion, the emotional journey that you have to go through to build a business. You know, so uh, that's where I've been through, and that's what we have done, and 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 largely we did a lot of these things. Uh, you know, just being opposite uh, to the cultural mm -hmm. setting, to the educational setting, into all other things. And so uh, I will go with uh, through some of the points. But I think uh, uh, we all should be uh, uh, interested in, especially those who want to build uh, businesses. So um, the first one is you must have, you must be clear of yourself as to what you want to do, and you must state, you must know your level. I don't have any money. I don't have any connection. I don't, I don't even have any job, but I want to build a business. That's fine. That's the level. Or I have connection. I have technical expertise. I have money. I want to enter into this. Area, or I, I'm even doing business in America, or I'm doing business in England, I'm doing business in Jamaica, but I want to come to Ghana to start a business. You must define what you have and what you don't have. Now, if you don't have anything and you want to come, then you must know that business, you know, largely they say it's tough and it's tough. <laughs> it's about problem solving, it's about creativity, it's about uh, adding value. So you must know the skill set that you have, and you must also understand our kind of market. If you look at our market, we don't have, majority of our people don't have credit. You know, so if you want to start a business here, price is very sensitive. 
they will say we are poor. It's not that we are poor. It's because we have different way of buying, you know. So we don't have a lot of the people. Maybe ninety percent of the people don't have credit card with thousand CDs or ten thousand CDs to make spend, which means they spend as as they make they spend. So if you want to do any business, I think that you look at the larger market, which is the ninety percent or more of our people, and which means that you have to define it or you have to price where the majority of the people can really uh, buy. You know, so our, our, our business is price is critical. The kind of price or the kind of product and how we price it is, is critical. A lot of people in the business school, they are talking of niche market and all those. I say, well, that's why most of the multinationals, a lot of them struggle because they are using models that don't work. And even they, even they come with a lot of money. You go to the retail market, a lot of the multinationals who are purely importing, they have had a lot of trouble. Why? Because the price is sensitive. You are going to sell a shirt and you are charging 200 Ghana cities. Majority of the people don't need that kind of shirt. You know? But if you bring it to five, 50 Ghana cities, 30 Ghana cities, same quality, the people can buy it. You know, So you have to understand that, that we don't have the credit and we, we probably don't even need it. <laughs> and so we buy with a lot of attention on the money. How much is it costing? You know, so once you're able to tackle that, and the next one is you should you should be able to look at products or businesses where you don't bring everything. You don't bring everything. You don't bring, you know, you're importing everything. I think with time, if you don't have very strong financial backing, uh, you struggle. Because then you have you have you have you, you know all the markups, all the all the things that you put on the price becomes much expensive. So you can't sell it. You know, but if you can break something that is semi-finished, or even if it's not semi-finished, maybe sometimes even you bring all, if you have to bring raw materials at all. Businesses that have been set that way uh, uh, seem to do uh, some bit of, you know, they have some bit of success because then they have a product here. They, they cut the taxes from the pot and they're able to price with the people uh, in mind. So these well, are some of the words. I have a question. Yeah, I have a question. You said don't bring all of your your units or your or your. Are you talking about people who sell and who bring things to the continent, uh, yes, or someone who comes from the, the diaspora and they have units of of a product? You're saying they shouldn't bring their entire business here. Yeah, I'm meant? talking of the, the product. Let's say yeah. uh, if you are if you're making let's say body lotion, unless you are bringing it at a very you know, unless you are getting the product at a very cheap rate, by the time that you bring a finished product here and you're not able to reduce it, you're going to sell at a price the majority of the people will not be able to buy. You will think that you're talking of quality. I think that we talk of the price before the quality in our market. You know, even though we want the quality, if you are, if you ask me to choose between majority of the people, if you ask them to choose between quality and price, they look at the price first before they even look at the quality. There is a session of the people who look at quality, but how many are they? Can you build and grow and scale the business with that number? Which likely is not so. You know, so for instance, if you come to the real estate field, you are building and you want to sell something around $250,000, $300,000, $500,000. No problem. You have a few people who, be, who have money to buy, but majority of the people will not be in that category. You know, so which means you just focus in a few places. But if you want to grow business and change the course of our country, then that kind of thinking uh, you know, must come in. So that is key. Because if you don't get that right, uh, a lot of the things that you're going to do, you will import even the concept, you import the idea, you import everything. And you think that the people will appreciate it. And a lot mm -hmm. of the times, that is where they design. So I'm saying that design the business so that it can work. If you don't May design the business. Yeah. May I reiterate this for some that may not really understand what you're saying? It, I've never heard okay. this and it makes so much sense. Okay. So if you guys aren't really capturing what he's saying, for those who have businesses existing, whether it's brick and mortar, maybe you're selling items online, you know, no matter what it is, he's saying don't just abandon your uh, initial business and, and just come and, and just like leave all behind because the product that you have that may be valued in your 
former place may not be as valued because they're going to compare it to the price. You understand? They're going to look at the price first within Ghana. He's teaching us about Ghana, the market within Ghana. Okay. And so that makes so much sense because if I had a product there, you know, I, I mean, which I actually did, but I didn't know this strategy, you know? And so people ask, well, how are you able to do what you do? I never left the, I never brought it all the way here. You understand? I made it more international. But it wasn't that I I knew that. So now when I, I listen to you, I'm like, oh my gosh, had I brought the entire product here, which was my initial plan that I could have possibly have, you know, lost out because then I have a million competitors here whose prices are very, very low. Yes. Okay. Yeah, exactly. That's 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 perfect. That's 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 what you have said. So uh, you know, maybe you can even bring this the the the, the, the formula and try to repackage it. Okay. Do the printing, it makes it easier because the, it's, it's driven the access to funds in the people work that makes sense. so you're yeah. creating another branch of the business and just yes. you're not it's not like you're destroying your quality you're actually mm -hmm. just you're, you're working with the market the market is different right. here okay yeah. the market is different the market is different can you see that is the concept that the chinese use and they are using that to beat the europeans they use that the chinese let's say you need a machine uh, the European will say that the machine is 100,000 Ghana cities. It's quality. It will stay with you for 10 years before you maintain it. Chinese will tell you, no, I want to give it to you two years. And uh, it works for two years. It, I'm, going to give it, I'm going to give it to you 10,000, but it works for two years. And two years time, I will upgrade the, the technology on the machine. You know? And the majority of the people can afford the 10,000 than the 100,000 that is going to stay for 10 years that I can afford. You know, so if I if I need machines to set up a business and you are into machine, you know, production, you are looking at something like that where you can take a lot of the accessories out to do the basic things that the people need at a good price. You know, and, and for me, that's what that's why sometimes they beat the others, because that's where we are. You know, so uh, design the business said that it works. Design the business said that it works. The next one will be. Uh, you have a lot. <laughs> Majority of us, I, just, I said that we will start as a small business. You know, we'll a small business. business. Yes. A and so don't be so much concerned about your ego and the so called dignity that comes with it. You know, so if you have to go to the market to set a table to sell, go ahead and do that because that is where your starting point is. You know, if you have to drop all, forget about all the things that you have, you, know, you have achieved. You want to start with where you are, with the little you have. Most people are waiting for capital to start business. And that is not so much right. If you wait for capital and you're not getting it, a lot of the times start, just, just roll, just start, just, just push the button, you know, with the little. As the concept evolves, as the model evolves, you will be able to know. Let's say I want to open a provision shop where we got provision shop here, you know, where you said make sugar and those. This I do this, this, this maybe I do the mass and they're asking for 10,000 cities. I don't have 10,000 cities. Okay. Maybe I can put a table in front of me and put water on it. That's just starting. When the people come, they will tell, oh, can you bring me uh, granite? Can you bring me milk? Can you bring me sugar? Instead of me having 10,000 to go and put everything there, big rice, everything, and people come and they are not, the attention is not even there. You know? If I start with the level that I have as the market request, as the market continues, I'll be able to stock the shop or the table even with the very things that the people need. And from there, I'll be able to sell every day, get something. And once you're seeing the money every day, nobody will tell you to grow. Then the next time you see, you have been able to accumulate money from that. And now you are, you're getting a, a shop, a small shop. You know, so it's more of uh, starting from where you are with whatever you have. And once you move, you always move, meet people who will be able to give you uh, the right help. You know, so it's not so much about waiting for capital to start business, I, I, I mean, the way I see it, especially with the businesses that are not project oriented. If I don't have capital, I'm not going to look at projects, project oriented businesses where you, you push a lot of money before you start to get revenue from that. I will not look at that. I will look at business that I have a product, the next minute somebody is paying me something. And from there, I'll be able to grow then all the other big ideas will come uh, uh, on board. And, and this one is for people who seem to think that they don't have anything at all. So how can I do a business? Now, the other professionals, startup, you still have to start from. Don't lose your money like that. Just come and 
you know, rent a very big office, put everything there, and you don't even have one customer. That one mm. will break you. You know, so you still have to evolve. People talk about business plan. I think that this is the business plan. The business plan is about the customer. So if you don't understand the customer, how are you going to build the business plan? You know, so once it starts to grow, you will know what your customers want. And then you'll be able to identify where the money should go. So you don't, you don't, you don't, you, you become so much resourceful with the letter you have because you understand the market. So if you test it and it's not working, then it will be very easy to pull out because then you have not invested so much. And this is with people who don't have much to start, you know. So uh, that, 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 that is one thing. Uh, we have talked of the pricing. The other thing that I will want to talk about will be uh, the way the people think the way the people think when you pick when you employ somebody those regiments and regulations and controls where this is it if you don't follow it i punish you and people link them to productivity our people don't respond to that so and business you have to if you're going to grow the business you will employ people especially and if you're going to employ people you must understand them because that's where the frustration will come from if you want to treat them like donkeys and you want to treat them like they're nothing you're giving them money so they're nothing the people will the person does not have money but he will leave the money and go but that's that they don't have that psyche you know respect is so much important to our people the money you know so if you want to build a team it's it's more of family arranged you know our approach is not so much of the taskmaster kind of approach that you see in in the west our task is our approach is so much of the family kind that's what i see so you you, you have time to respect them to involve them to trust them even if they make mistakes they would want you to still be nice in correcting them by shutting them and catching them you know and that's how you manage them if you come in with ah uh, they will steal they will run away with my money uh you will not get the best to work with even even the best ones if they see that you don't trust them if they do something sometimes they may even be doing something which is wrong and they are aware but the way you handle that they will leave it you know and that's why sometimes people building businesses they they get stuck with just one because they don't know how to go with the people you know they are not able to get into the psyche and you're going to make a lot of errors you're going to make a lot of mistakes before you're able to build these teams who can run the business sometimes even better than what you're running but it comes through a lot of errors, a lot of mistakes. And you have to understand the culture that you build, where the culture trusts them, gives them respect, uh, involves them. You you ask them about their family. You ask them about, you know, even their church. <laughs> you ask them almost about everything. The funeral, even if you can't go, you show interest in that. That's how you build a team in our country. Hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's about one of those. <laughs> <laughs> and this without is being... <laughs> this is magnificent because not only are we learning about business we're actually learning about like how to deal with the people yes. on a more interpersonal level and not just this corporate come work for me and be the donkey like you said mm -hmm. you know and i pay and you I'm... and I care about you kind of approach uh, you will really find really it my my question is why is it that some Ghanaians, not all, are so willing to give of themselves freely to some of these foreigners that come? You know, like even though they may not take the time to learn of the culture, or are they? Are they taking the time to learn of these practices culturally? They don't, they, and they don't care. But there is something that they have, which is our understanding of their color. There's a program that works for them. If I lead Ghanaians as a Ghanaian. Or if I lead a corporation, a company as a Ghanaian, as one of them, my reaction, my, my interaction with them is a bit different from if a Chinese or a European leads them. The Chinese can be brutal, can be, you know, but they still yeah. think that they're not one of us, you know. Hmm. But even sometimes, sometimes they keep their pressure until one day they react. And that's why you can't control them. You know, but but they can be calm and follow them. And 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 they may think that they are stupid, but one day. They get up and it becomes disastrous. But if you look like them, the respect approach, the the, manage, the management approach it should be entirely different because then you don't come with the color. The color has done some kind of evil uh, on, the, on our minds, you know? Even, even our top 
uh, executives, uh, top, you know, uh, top people. The color has done something uh, really bad uh, on us. That's that's true, you know. So let's say I wear this shirt and I go to the bank, and somebody comes with suit and tie, subliminally, uh, uh, subconsciously, uh, you know, the other guy looks like somebody. <laughs> So and they think that person has money, you know. It's, it's something that very few people do. You know, so it, it's it's there. We are still working on that, but so they come with that, and and that's why maybe sometimes they seem like they have advantage, but not all through. Um, do you want to um, take some questions now, or do you want to wait towards the end? No, no, I can't take questions now. Someone's asking a question here. Let's see. They they want to know how much does the average Ghanaian make per month? So wow. as if they come and bring a business. Well, I guess it would depend on you know what the business is. Okay. Hmm. Maybe you can you can session them into three. We have those with the the very you know the SS level or the SHS level or or below. Those will make maybe below a uh, thousand or below. Then the university people could make maybe thousand to five thousand or so, and then the rest could could be, uh, you know, as much as they make. But the majority, the majority of the people, I dare say, maybe fifty percent will make thousand cities or so. Now, if you pick the figure as it is, you may say that is, is not. But then they are renting like fifty Ghana cities or, or hundred Ghana cities for a single room, you know. So if you compare the percentage of what they make. And and what they uh, in terms of accommodation or food uh, for thousands, somebody will be able to still save something. Mm -hmm. in that. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. And if you're not sure of how to compare that, um, I do believe that's approximately 500 US. So that's mm -hmm. to take care of their their residents as well as food and and transportation. Okay, guys. And so these are just estimates, by the way. Okay, yeah. you can care. You can um, continue, Kwabena. Okay, so um, um, so we have talked about the team. Now, the other thing that you have to do is you have to also work on yourself. As as somebody who wants to do business, you have to work on yourself. If you have built business before, uh, before those things will not be strange. You know, where your family will tell you why why do you want to build business. You know, where you yourself you will tell yourself, well, why do you have to go through this? <laughs> I don't need this. You know, so the daily conversations that you're having with yourself, the doubt. Your people asking you why because most people don't know what it takes to build business they think that it's just having a job for yourself no it takes a lot of effort it's very intense it's 24 hours you know especially for the first five years or so and you must give yourself like 10 years before the thing starts to work depending on your skill level you know so most of us without any skill we, we, the failure rate will be there the first few years it to go up and down go up and down then it starts to go up but that for me for, for where I sit, it takes about five years minimum, you know. So within that, you have to have the right skill set. What do you know about money? It's so critical. The decisions that you're going to know about money, I mean, you're going to get, get, make up money. So what is the, what is, what do you know about money? You cannot run a business as an employee. You can't, the, the, the employee psyche that you have, that, that you go to work, you come home, you rest, watch TV. Once you start business, you have switched. Now every problem is coming to you, which means that <laughs> you have to grow fast. And a lot of the growth it will, will come from the mistakes that you're going to commit. And and the most dangerous ones are the money mistakes that we make. You know, because then they don't go away. If I pick somebody's money and I trade with it and I lose it, the person will still ask for it. If I go for bank loan and I lose it, they still will come for it. If I make mistakes and employ more people than I need, I'm going to spend money paying the rent. If I cut corners and I'm caught, I'm going to deal with, you know, the, 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 the issues that come with it. And all of them come, come uh, into some bit of losses in terms of money. So the money decisions are critical, which means you have to educate yourself on money constantly, you know, because if you lose it, the business is gone. So, and I, I think that I said it, uh, I think that you set, you set a business where you are in charge of the cash flow must be in charge of the cash flow. Somebody else should not be in charge of the cash flow. If somebody else is in charge of your cash flow, they can say anything. That's why if you see contractors mainly go through a lot of financial difficulties. Some of the businesses that we started that were contract, you know, project basis, we went through a lot of stress and a lot of pain. Why? Because, you know, you go to a lot, you pump your money, then you go to a lot of processes before you get paid. 
Somebody selling water on the table will beat you all the time. They will beat you. Why? Because they see money the next day. And it's not even the profit. The fact that they, they get money coming in, they can make a lot of decisions. They give promise, the check will clear. But the contractor will give you promise, the check will not clear because the other person failed, even if they are honest. You know, so you have to look at businesses that you control the money so much. If somebody has, you can't control everything, but a lot of the times you must control the money. Why? Because you also will register in the country. And some of the, I don't know a lot of the laws in terms of diaspora, but you can talk to Ghana Investment Promotion Council. You, you can go to their website, GIPC. A lot of information is there as to what to do uh, to set up businesses. Uh, you can also go to Mm -hmm. Ghana Investment what? Promotion Council. Ghana Promotion Council. Ghana Investment Promotion Council. Oh, okay. Investment. Pro I've never heard of this. Okay. Yes, at GIPC. Uh, they have a lot of information there uh, on their website. Uh, you can also go there. They can tell you a lot of the areas that they think people must invest in. You know, and they they give help to almost. I mean, they are ready. And the others take advantage of it a lot, except our own people, you know, except our own people. So we must go there, ask them. They will teach you all. It's one stop where they can they can give a lot of information, you know. And there are a lot of diaspora uh, secretariats all across, you know, where people, a lot of diasporans who are also have built businesses, uh, they can give a lot of information on this. Registrar General, where you have to register your business, their, their, their website is also there. Then you have to talk to the Tax is depending on the kind of business. If you are bringing in a lot of money, I think you have to talk to these people to talk. Uh, uh, well, I mean, if you are bringing more than a million, talk to them. Quick question Is it true, if you know this answer, um, is it true that um, a diaspora or someone who is a citizen somewhere, somewhere else and they want to come invest, um, is it true that we have to partner up with a Ghanaian? Like, like 50 50? Uh, no, the laws they keep changing. But uh, I know that they have to partner with okay. everything. And, but they're also they making a lot of revision. They, they are making a lot okay. of revision. Sometimes they don't have to partner, but the minimum capital needed, it's a bit up. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they are making a lot of changes. The year of return, you know, the experience are talking. Don't forget that. A lot of you are here and they are listening. And most of these laws were set so that we never go into innovation and entrepreneurship. Don't forget that. Because if, if let's say, for instance, Jamaicans knew that they could come here and set up mining companies entirely owned by Jamaicans or Americans, and they have right, just like all of us, you think that the, the people would not put something there to prevent them? <laughs> they would put something there to prevent them. Because when it comes to money and power, they don't want us to be in charge. That's a fact. You know, so some of these laws were, you no, know, they are colonial undertones. But I think they are waking up and, and they are making, and the more we all push, because I am of the opinion that the missing is 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 our brothers and sisters, because they come with, with a lot of heat and a lot of energy and a lot of expertise. They they feel that the the, the wealth will stay here, because if if a British man comes to build a business, he takes the profit. Away. Absolutely. <laughs> he has Absolutely. no connection. My, my hope is that these fiery diasporans have staying power. That is my hope. Okay, staying power. They have to work on that. Uh, uh, you have to have same power as well because this is almost more or less like a call where you come and you see the Chinese has employed somebody and you see the way they treat them and you're not happy. You don't just have to talk about it and become an advocate. You also have to set solutions. So build a company, employ them and show them how you should treat them a human being. They will learn. Mm. You know, so it's not just about the, the, the motivation, but we must also have the, the power to also create the wealth that they will see. You know, uh, and so GIPC is one, Registrar General is one. The tax office, you can also talk to them, you know, um, and, and then the issue, um, what we call SNET. If you employ people, they will require of you to pay those. But all those, uh, if you start from the very top, you go to them, they will teach you all this. They will, they will, they will show you all this. It's, and it depends on each industry. You know, I mean, let's say if you want to go into mining, there are other agencies that you would have to go to them and talk to them. Now, the thing is that when you go and they do all kind of things. Don't worry. You want to build. So until you get what you want, don't 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 give up. That's all. <laughs> you know. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Hold on one second. So, I'm looking at someone. Hold on one second. 
Um, my thoughts on everything. Can you please rephrase your question? How big is the influence from outside in 2020? Rephrase that so I can understand. Okay. Okay. The floor is yours, Kwabana. <laughs> okay. So I've talked about you, are it. you must you must have that. Mm -hmm. You must know that you need that. Fine. You know, there are a set of an entrepreneur. And there are the, the, the mindset of entrepreneur. You must have the two. We 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 built that. It's not that we're intelligent to build it, but I mean, you know, by default, we're just going through that. And surprisingly, we're doing that. You know, so the mindset is where you're persevering, you're consistent. You know that you have to wake up, you have to wake up and build it. You have to know, you have to know that it's a long-term thing that you're doing. You must believe in yourself, you, have, you must believe in our country as well. You know, you must know that this is where the opportunity is. Where you show up is where the opportunity is. That is the mindset of an entrepreneur. You are solving problems. You don't just get frustrated and you want to give up so quickly. No. And you think beyond just making money. You want to make, you know, what, what is the English word? You, 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 you want to check life. That's right. <laughs> In fact, you want to check life. That is the psyche that we want. If you see a, a boxer who is a champion, he thinks differently from the guy on the street. You know, so if you want to be an entrepreneur, there's a particular way you think. You're not, what, you're not the one breaking down and complaining and crying and looking for help and waiting for somebody to give you a hand. No. You know, so that's the psyche that you have. The other skill set that you need is the money, is the people management. You're building systems, the ability to build systems beyond yourself. You know, uh, uh, being able to register the company in a particular way, you know, whether it's a limited liability company or an enterprise, you have to know that. The other technical skills will be if you are building, let's say you are in, you are going to build houses, maybe affordable houses for people. You must know how houses are built. You know, you must know everything in between. You know, you must know the tax laws. Those are all the skill sets that, if you get them well, with the mindset and with the skill set, you'll be able to push, and and automatically, the success will start to come. You know, because those are the things needed. And once you get them in a certain measure. So the reason we make we continue to make the mistakes is because we are trying to, you know, balance it. We are, you're putting in, you're shaking it, you're putting it gets to the, the limit that it has to produce it to produce. You know, it gets to the limit that you become well skilled. If you pick the best footballer, you can count on him that it get, he gets to a particular location in score because he didn't train. So that's what that's what entrepreneurship is about, you know. You are building to a state when you get that, they give you 100,000, you know exactly what to do. So you can control the risk. You can control a lot of things because you have built consciously uh, yourself. You know, so those, some of the things that you have to know as well. You know, so it goes beyond the money. It's, it's, it's just as somebody's a musician, you're building business. And we need, as a matter of fact, I think we have produced Africans all around the globe. We have produced musicians, we have produced sports people, they actually told us that that's what we are good at. I think mm -hmm. that is the. I think that is the. Our greatest force <laughs> is the systems and technology and innovation. You pick the average young guy. If you give him the opportunity, the kind of programming. There are a lot of young boys in Ghana who code. Nobody taught them. You give them any vehicle, you, with all the complex technology, it breaks down. They will fix it. Who said that they don't have that? And I think that is where the money is ability to produce people who can build innovative businesses you know and those are all over and i i think we must get a lot of our people into that let them continue with the entertainment let them continue with the sports but for us to create wealth it is in the it's in business it's entrepreneurship for our people when we are building our own retail centers we are building our own mining companies we are, we are taking care of our own oil our gold you know we are building our own service companies we are owning our banks this is where you create wealth and and that's where you know they push all the best and and they, they you know they put them on tv everywhere he's a singer no problem but who owns the label that's that's the person he's a good, great footballer no problem but who owns the football team i don't want to play just like that i want to own a football team and the skill set to own a football team is different from the skill set to play you know, a lot of the times they they just shoot camera and the one play they will forget about the man you know so it's a, it's, a, it's a program and we i think we have to uh, tell our people that this is where the money and and to um encourage more to to take pride in where they are i'm i'm hearing a lot of about a mm -hmm. lot of young girls here i mean 
I don't know what's going on. I feel as though this is something that I might have to address in the future along with Angie is that some of the young girls, they want to come with us. They think we're going back to America or whatever, like take me to America, take me, you know, I want to do this or that. And we're like, wait, hold on a second. You have something we do not have, you know, mm -hmm. like hold, slow down, slow down. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I mean, the educational, I mean, you guys, if you didn't know, Ghana is pro education. Okay. <laughs> and with the current administration, he has made it, you know, a point to make sure that everyone is educated. We're talking private schools and all, all fully funded. Now, the thing about this is encouraging the youth to not want to leave to go serve and be employed by someone else. Why not use these skills and these techniques here to build? I mean, this okay. is a beautiful country. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you have a great point. But you see, if you if you listen to our news, if you watch our TV, if you listen to our radio, a lot of the programs are on, on politics. A lot of the programs are on religion, entertainment, sports. These are the things that they, they, they feed in the people with. What we are talking, this kind of discussions, very few people engage in this. You know, so automatically, the people's mind is programmed to travel, to go and look for jobs. And therefore, if I don't find a job, then I become uh, useless. I must, I must go out. Is there is the information? The moment we 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 balance the information, the same people. You see the program that we do on the radio. There are so many people that is do that is done in in P actually, and it goes across the whole country. There are so mm -hmm. many young people who just will call you or send you a message or send you a WhatsApp, and say that thank you. Now I've started to see that I can do something where I am. So mm -hmm. it's not so much that they're desperate to travel; it's so much that they need information. And my book, a lot of them are reading it, and you'll be shocked the kind of response that we get. You know, so uh, the same thing happened to me. I grew up without having, just as I said in the book, I grew up without having these things, not as constructive. The father, it, it comes to mind once a while. It's not it. That's not what decides your decision. What decides your decision is the construction. The fact that you've been deliberate, you know, you've been educated on it, intentional. And for me, when we pick a particular subject and we are intentional and we break it down and somebody picks it, they will be able to make right informed decision about that, about their life. And we have not equipped our, our youth that much with these things. Where you complete school, these are the things that you are going to go through. These are the things that you must expect. This is what is there. If you travel, if you stay, these are the options. You know, if you want to start business, these are the things that you're going to expect. If you want to get a job, this is where you want to go. Being intentional and teaching and giving these things out, for me, will be the ones that will solve, will solve a lot of things. Because it's more, I mean, I grew up, a lot of my uncles and my parents, they live in, a, in actually in America. <laughs> Why did they go? Because they thought that they, would be, they become rich. You know, mm -hmm. so that's basic. My uncle will come and they sent from their bag. You know, that alone would want to go to America. So <laughs> you watch our TV, anybody who projects himself like, uh, you know, from England is the standard. So mm. that is something that um, unknowingly they push on us. So you need a whole kind of information to, to reprogram that. And a lot of the times, uh, if they don't get that, it's, it's difficult for you to change them until you give them the basis. Hmm. OK. Thank you for that. Hmm. All right. We have some questions. OK. Someone wants to know who you are. I'm just going to put uh, your links right here in the chat so that you, you guys can have an opportunity to check out his um, his book as well. You can read it for free here. Mm. Oh, okay. You can continue, Kwabana. I'm just going to attach okay. your link. All right. So um, um, so we are talking about entrepreneurship. I think it's a tool that will help us to develop fast. And it's not just those of us on the continent. We also need the diaspora. And we need them to also see that the resources in Africa is not only for the Africans here. It's for every, every African everywhere. And the government structure, if it frustrates you, don't worry, it frustrates all of us. <laughs> so when you come and it's frustrated, don't worry. Because they are, they don't know, <laughs> don't know. <laughs> they don't know that they don't know, you know? So you come, but any, any, you can go into construction, you can go into real estate development, you can go into education, there's health, there is technology, you can go almost everywhere on the continent with any kind of business. And it's open and that's a fact you come in with right management skill with the right respect for the people and the culture 
there's nothing that can stop you. Of course, you meet problems and businesses fail everywhere. So if it fails, we strategize. You know, if you're going to look for a job and they fire you, what would you do? For another job. So if you do business and it fails, because our journey, we have failed several times. Why? Because we were building. It gets to a point yeah. that putting very little effort, you know, getting the results and you're shocked. Ah, this is very easy. It's not that it's easy, it's now you're stronger. Because <laughs> you've already suffered. <laughs> <laughs> and what it took to get to where you are you now today. you know yeah so it gets to a point now you are you are you have the muzzle so you can lift you know so before that you're training so if you if you if, if they frustrate you don't worry about that but we need we need a cross board and we need a lot of experts to look into this all over all over and 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 you can see the government is also doing a lot i think that if you if you have these people go on for a while a lot of things will be uh, very well set up and that's a fact you know so uh that is that is that and then you can also sometimes you can even use the social media to also start to to see how you can connect with the right people as well because it's a, it's a big leverage that we have now because without this i would not have seen your videos i would not have watched you you know you will not have educated me with all the things that you have educated me on likewise you know? and you are changing <laughs> oh, sorry. I was just going to say one thing I noticed about Ghana, but not just Ghanaians, Africans that I've visited. Um, they love WhatsApp. WhatsApp is like this very powerful tool. But now it's tele is it Telegraph now that they're using Telegraph? Telegraph. Yeah, Telegraph. Yeah. yeah. So um, these systems, these apps, I mean, are used so well for networking businesses and African people are so tight knit. They do not have a problem supporting each other. This is a great example of black unity that many of us have talked about, you know, in the West attempting. And so, um, you know, I know this is a little bit off, but I'm just putting this out there because of the social media comment that you made. I mean, it works a great deal here. You know, yeah, people will true. support you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. And you can connect with any, any of the people that you want to connect. Sometimes when you get access, you send a message, a lot of them will send you back. So all the help that you need is there. They're just not sure. You just have to come. Uh, you know, <laughs> restaurants, food, engineering, everywhere. You know, so if you look around, yeah. it's everywhere. Whatever skill that you have, just try it and see. It works because we have to go through that. We believe here. We wanted to succeed here. No other way. Nobody could tell me that, yes, pack your things and go anywhere. No. I would it. <laughs> so even if you're on the floor, you're on the floor. You are bleeding, no problem. You will heal tomorrow, you know, and you keep, and you keep. And then just one day, you see that everything starts to turn around. And you look back, and your dream is really coming into reality. And that's entrepreneurship. By all means, your dream will be realized. It's just like that. You know, they say, I'm not a woman, but you know, a woman takes it. By all means, if nothing happens, it will show. <laughs> you know, so it's the same thing. The same thing. Yeah. Once you take it and you work on it, you work on it, you work on it. It will. They put. I think that there are a lot of data that they have put on entrepreneurship. Just scare people. We know it's tough. We agree, but I challenge a lot of the the, the conventional thinking on it. That it, they say everybody cannot do it. I say okay. So what do you do? You want to do something you are just as you can look for a job you can start a business it's more of training than something that is intrinsic it's more of training and it's more of the psyche it's more of the skill set you know so any any so long as you have a dream and you want to realize it you will need those things you know mm -hmm. so it can be education it can be anything mm -hmm. what you're doing is entrepreneurial for you to pick an idea and now people can see the evidence of what you conceive only God knows what you have to endure to do that. <laughs> that is it. So now you look back and you look back, you look back and say, oh, so everything that I endure, now I'm happy. You can see it. It's so fulfilling, so gratifying that you, are, you change life. Now you can look at our guests, the people who work with us, say, that, thank God we didn't give up. And now people are connected with you. So if you didn't do that, those people probably will be somewhere. You know, and you get the chance to also coach and train and create more prosperity, not only with them, but even with their families. And they start to see good examples. More so for me, 
we need that. We need the right tools on entrepreneurship. And it cannot be the, 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 the models that they push on us. It has to be something that we have generated here. Where you are, you know, you are not compromised on your values and your character. You're building because how can you destroy something that you're building? So if you if you if you're just hungry for money, you're not building the country. You're not building the people. You're just thinking of yourself. And for me, that that will by all means explode. And that's why sometimes you see some of them exploding and say, ah, no, no, it's not because because it was set to explode. Why? Because they compromised so much. They became so much greedy. Because they didn't think of the prosperity, the shared prosperity for all of us. They were just thought of themselves. Alone. And if, if you build business with that kind of mindset, it will destroy. And it, sometimes it destroys big. You know. So the values are also very critical. The honesty, the, the, the faithfulness, the, the, the endurance, the kindness, the compassion. We need those to build business. The laugh. Without that, business is true. Anything will destroy you. Without that. Because for us, we just we just clear with the heart and and so so many people can offend you but you still keep going because you are pure with your heart and with your intention and and that for me is is rare business you know mm. I don't think a lot of people know that about business and that is how you can sustain yourself and have people come back you have That's to right. have higher levels of integrity and I yeah. try to speak to these young guys about that many 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 guys have come in and out through this project. And there's been a couple that I've had to say, you know, it's very unfortunate, you know, that you couldn't do right by this situation. And I'm like, here was a, a media, you know, a situation where we could have promoted you, but unfortunately, because you didn't display integrity in this, you you, you basically mm -hmm. took advantage of me and I, and I have to correct mm -hmm. them on this so mm -hmm. that they'll do better later because how will you get better if someone doesn't you know um, edify you in that moment so i don't ever yell or anything I, you know mm -hmm. i just I, I just marvel at just the lack of insight that mm -hmm. this particular business had you know okay. because sure. someone may not have said anything they may not have received that instruction you know see i i actually learned that through youtube many years ago it was mm -hmm. a, a business course on integrity within business you know okay. i didn't have to go the university to learn that and so i wanted to mm. share that because you may not see that you know mm. they may not see that and so I, I totally agree with what you're saying you know not just doing business not just throwing it out there but actually having a passion for it and also being a trustworthy person exactly. you know and believing exactly. in your product yeah, yeah. dealing with That's your right. customers or, or whatever right. your client you know mm -hmm. yes you see without that without the right foundation you are, you are, what you're building is not, you don't need it, then don't start it without you being, being truthful. Because we have had a lot of people just give us opportunities just because they know that you, if you say yes, it will be yes. And even if you meet problem and you say, they will believe. Why? Because they know that you, your word means a lot to you. And for me, that is even the capital. It's the capital. It's the safety net. It protects you. Anything can happen in business. It's true. But Something that can secure you is your decision to be truthful and to be to be honest with what you have, you know, and that protects you everywhere. It may not push you faster, you may not explode overnight, but I can tell you that in terms of sustainability, is the safest, you know, and you oh. grow and it stays, and you grow and it stays. So, and when you talk about customer service, it's the same. You tell your customer, come, they come, you're not lying. If the product is not good, Madam, this product is not good. Therefore, it used to be 100 Ghana. This one is 50 Ghana. So we are reducing it because we know it's going to fade. Integrity. You know? There it is, That's right it. there. We'll fight That's you. When they come and they're they will angry. Come again and, again and again and again, because you were That's honest. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They believe the product is They'll come back yeah. again and again because this business owner told the truth. I like this person. You know about that too, that business strategy of being so honest and having this integrity that most people, mm -hmm. like they'll go to an inferior situation just based off of the character of the the person giving the business or offering the business, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you're treating your customers like crap and like, oh, you're the hottest this or that and they need to come to, you know, most people, they're not gonna come back to you. You know, no, they're just don't, not. Don't come. Sure. So you just have to be, and then you you have to also train your team. If you have to, if you have to employ, you train your team to have the same thing. To say, oh God, 
Ooh, I've, well, I've seen gotcha. businesses here destroyed and the owner would not know. I've had to pull owners to the side like, you might want to talk to this employee right here mm -hmm. because they're going to ruin your business. Yeah. The yeah. owner might be upbeat and like, welcome this or that, you know, but there's an employee there that's just dragging their feet and just like, yes. well, yeah. we have to be mindful of who's on our team. That's right. <laughs> yes. yes. And you see, when you build the culture like that, like 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 the shops, for instance, we have multiple locations. You can test it. A lot of the times, you, you will see that is the same culture. Why? Because you're intentional. And once you, when we pick, we actually do the interviews ourselves. We train them, and we tell them that yeah. when you go, your manager will also train you. And then when they fit the culture, they will stay. If they don't fit the culture, they will stay. You know, because you have to be selfless, you have to be hardworking, you have to be truthful, even if it's not hundred percent. And we expect them to, to carry on the same to the customer, you know, and we do that intentionally. We train them and we train them not only on the product, not only on money, but life in general as well, because you have to, you have to actually kill some of the viruses because when the person is there and is looking at going to America, the job is not nothing to her, you know, but mm -hmm. if you tell them that like, you can build your life wherever you are, you have solved something. Now they are focusing. Now they're focusing. If they think that they have to go to another place to become successful, and that is conflicting in their head, they will not focus on the job. So very good people, but they have the diffuse, mm. you know, focus. And so once you're able to handle some of these little, little things that they think about all the time, they become very good people. And, and that helps the business to grow. So they carry the same thing to the customer service. And you can see that it will push you to buy. Why? Because it's in the culture and they work with their heart. And, and you have to do that, that we succeed together. Yeah. Wow, that is a brilliant strategy that you just brought out there, though. Mm -hmm. Just with regards to educating them. Well, I don't know if you do this, but I would I would attempt to do this in the future. Like, you know, mm -hmm. ask them about their purpose and what it is that they want right. to do in life. That's right. Where do they want to go? Yes. Are they passionate? Are they patriotic? Or are That's they right. just... just going <laughs> That's right. information as well because then you know, you know if they're here to if they're here for the long haul you know mm -hmm. if they want to grow like, you know yes. possibly want to become an investor later you know maybe have shares you know or it's just it's like i'm going to america i just need this for four months and you know it's it's very true. interesting and the moment the, you see human beings i think you should inspire human beings to work on their own to make decisions on their own they should not come to work because they, they just need money then they don't care you know, so just as you said, purpose, gift, talent, they must know that if I come here, what separates me from the other person? Maybe it's my eye, maybe it's my voice, maybe it's my nose, maybe it's the way I think, you know, maybe it's my height. You have something that is beautiful. You start contribute to the business through that, you know, and, and everyone has that actually. So once they know that, okay, maybe I'm, I'm, I don't like my nose, but my eyes are very, you know, very nice. And so use your eyes. <laughs> let's get there. Let's get there. Bringing uh, out their strongest points. I, I agree. Bring yeah. up, bringing out their strongest gifts and points. I get that. Someone, someone has a question here. Um, let's see here. Um, nowadays in the, di the diaspora, a lot of entrepreneurs are digital. Are there any systems in place for online entrepreneurs? Hmm. You want to answer that one? But you know that one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll just give just a little, uh, just, well, okay. When it comes to digital, it's kind of like international. So I don't really, I mean, there's plenty of systems available. Um, they have a system here called Jumia. It's kind of like Amazon. Yeah. Like you can order yeah. things, you yeah. know, it's, the internet is here, you know, yeah. high speed internet is here. Yes. We have some blackouts here and there, but as you can see, we've been doing pretty good you know, with yeah. our service. Um, digital, when it comes to digital nomads, I mean, they're pretty, they're international, you know, they're, there's just, and then also entrepreneurs, you know, they have multiple streams. We didn't talk about that. I don't know if that's on your, your, your mm -hmm. keynotes or whatever, but um, yeah, being online, that's more international. So that's not anything that could really hold you back unless you're in an area where it's extremely rural and there's no service. That's really the, the only problem when it comes to digital nomads or digital mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, y your service, your internet service, you know, mm -hmm. so um, they're, they're flexible. They have like the best jobs in the world. You know, it depends yeah. on your market too. It's true. Some people will build the, 
will build their own websites and sell over their own website. Some people are using Instagram. Some people are using Facebook. I know people who are just selling on Facebook. They just put the product there, they sponsor it, and people get oh. calls. Yeah. We use the mobile money transfer a lot of the times instead of visa cards and, and, and those things. We use the mobile money, and it works perfectly for a lot of people. You know, MTN, mm -hmm. mobile money. Vodafone mobile money. So the payments are there. And then you can give them to cars to send them, or you can give them to post office or some other uh, career services around. So people, a lot of young ladies are selling property just from their own. They just shoot picture, put it there, sponsor, and they yeah. sell. I know a lot of friends who are just selling online from their room. Then we have a shop, but they are making uh, decent revenue out of those businesses. So people, yeah. It's over. Yeah. yeah, it is definitely true. And then for those who may be from a different country and maybe you have a, a warehouse or where you're di distributing different items, um, it's still the same. You know, as long as you're able to have your service, you can distribute even here. I mean, you could, that's something maybe some of you might consider, you know, a distribution center. Jumi is, is killing it right now. I don't know of any other company quite like that, but <laughs> I don't know if yeah, yeah. Amazon Jumia. will be able to keep up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I Ponaton is also another site. I think they also do something like that. Uh, What's that? But, uh, Tonaton. Oh, Tonaton. T N T. How do you spell it? Tonaton is T O N A Tonaton. T O N A T O N. Is it all together? Yes, it's like buy and sell. Tom means buy. Tom means sell. So they put those words together. You is it one Tonaton. word? Yes. Is it one, one word? word? Yes. Tonaton. Tonaton. yes. So this is this is another one like Jumia. Uh, I think another they company like Jumia. Yes, they have a common platform. You can advertise your product, then they charge you for the advertisement or something like that. Okay. So for those who are familiar with Amazon, I was oh my god, mm -hmm. I lived off of Amazon. <laughs> like I literally like. Decorated yeah. my whole, all of my tops <laughs> when I was in the States. So, tone yeah. to tone. Thank and you for that. Are, and there are a lot of young boys who build e commerce sites at a very cheap rate. So many of them all around. They built the whole oh, build e commerce site all over uh, at, a very, at a very cheap price. So, you just have to know them, you know. Okay. And they put the visa card payments and all those on them as well. Uh huh. <laughs> Nice. What else you got for us? Okay, so um, let me go through my notes. Um, so what we have talked about designing the business to succeed, and we have talked about the fact that we need we need to create the prosperity for all of us. So once the government puts in, in place the right infrastructure, and we are not you know doing a lot of these things that to destabilize the country, the rest is for a lot of our people to build businesses. It doesn't matter how they start. They can, it can be a typical startup where they work on the idea, they get investors and they blow it up. Or it can be the one that is very small, small, small. You raise your own capital and then it becomes a big business. What is important is that we have to see this as so critical to create uh, employment across board. And once it works in Ghana, it works in Nigeria, it can work almost everywhere on the continent. You know, and, and this is critical. So that it's not just people want, people want to prosper, people want to succeed. And I think that entrepreneurship is that. The only problem is that the school was not designed to make you an entrepreneur. The school was never designed to make you prosper. You don't, the secret of wealth is not in the classroom, it's on the street. You know, so once you're able to open this, people will see that, listen, if I want to become a millionaire and I don't want to become a thief, I must solve economic uh, problems. You know, and once you solve that, that's it. And, and nobody can take it from you. And and once you build a business, out of the business you can create wealth. Out of the business you can create wealth. Now the business is doing well. You, now you are thinking of how do I multiply more and grow and grow and create the wealth that I want. And and, lot, and I'm saying that it takes a, a bit of time, five to ten years before you start to get things set rightly. But everywhere, everywhere, from automobile to automobiles to agriculture to food processing plants to mining, it's all open. You just have to know the right uh, uh, um, government organization to contact, you know. And when you want to go into partnership, a lot of people look for that. Uh, I think that 
start on a project don't just enter some don't just start to register a business with anybody because you you just met them on facebook you must mm -hmm. know their you must know the person you must really test them sometimes they may be honest but they cannot endure the journey sometimes they may be honest but they may not be so much deep you know so you really have to work with the person for a while on some few things to see if this is the kind of person that i can roll it you know <laughs> before you go and register a business because the moment you put their names there you want to separate it becomes a legal issue you know they have to send through a lot of things before you can separate the person you can you can before you can take the person off the registration as a director or as a shareholder so look for look for people you think you connect so much with well with work on few things to see if this is the kind of person that can build business with but look for character first before anything look for that look for the ethics look for the fact that the person is not just hungry for money but the person really is mission driven is purpose driven you must look for that and you must see that the person has some a, a certain level of self-confidence as well you know you don't want somebody who just flipped up you know <laughs> or at a little disagreement you, know, you want somebody who is well composed where where is supposed and some of the things that you can share is the kind of things that they watch, the kind of things that they read, things that feed their mind will show whether this person is exposed and this person you can actually build a business with. They must have these things or the business will just start. Because when you're starting business and you start with the wrong team, the business is not going anywhere. You will waste years trying to maintain a team and build the business. It doesn't work. So you need somebody who really is on the same page so that you can you know, double the effort and, and grow the business. So you really look for that. Don't just use the smile. No, that smile is doing anything. You want somebody. <laughs> you I, have, I have a quick question for you. Now, what if it was? What if like a a, um, a young woman or young man comes with just a, a small savings of I don't know, maybe like twenty thousand CDs, right? And mm -hmm. they want to start a business but they don't have much connections. Would they be able to do something really small? Because I remember you said, you know what, why not just go get a table, you know, in the shop, boom, right? Because mm -hmm. the marketplace is filled mm -hmm. with people just selling all kinds of things. And that mm -hmm. is so real and so humbling, but mm -hmm. it's real because there's so many people that come through. Would someone be able to do that without getting penalized just, in, just until they can get, like get themselves up and at them? You know what I mean? What do you think about yeah. that? Um uh you see it depends on the the market you go to it depends on the area that you are i'm very certain that where you are now if you open a shop very few people will even be so much happy that you have opened a shop there that they come into fight you so uh, a lot of the times i don't think with uh, the, the diaspora especially i don't think that there's a lot of antagonism as to what they start and where they start but um uh, majority of them are doing some things here anyway and they are doing it so twenty thousand is, is even good money to start I, I, the reason why i was asking <laughs> because i wanted to do an experiment where i just went out and just did something you know and just just to see if people would notice you know like if they if i would be able to generate some money you know mm -hmm. <laughs> it was just gonna be and i do believe that i would be okay like i don't feel yes. that like people would come in at tags, are you not supposed to, you know, like people don't do that here, you guys, like people don't really mess with you, you know, yeah. but if you came and did big business, of course, you know, you'd be a, probably a red flag or whatever. Someone would eventually see like, oh, so you're, you know, <laughs> like, oh, so you built the hotel, didn't tell us, like, you know, <laughs> so I'm you know, wondering. <laughs> no, I, 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 I don't know that. The, but it's i don't think you have problems there are so many even the europeans do that they do a lot of things here Chinese are doing a lot of lebanese are doing a lot of things here. nobody is fighting them even the, those who even go for the very things that the people are doing you know so uh, a lot of the times the area is very key the location is very key and the kind of business that you're looking at uh, most people the services that you are providing they will be very happy for them even to look at and i think there are provisions for for diasporans as well yeah. so many starting people. up getting yes. it going and stuff because uh, yeah. for the, for the okay. part even after the point, we are looking for <laughs> you know so mm -hmm. i think there's, there are so many things that they are doing to make sure that you come so i don't think they're going to do anything to 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 frustrate anybody like that not from the top level no I, yeah I, 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 doubt, I doubt okay all right. Uh, are you ready to take questions? Yes, okay. madam. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and share this link here. 
if you guys want to ask the question in the comment section, feel free to do so, or you can come on in with us and we'll leave it open for the next uh, 15, 20 minutes. If we don't get anything, then we're gonna wrap it up. So there is the link here. You are welcome to ask your questions now in the chat room, or you can come on in live with us now. And you, if you have more points to share, you can do so. But the, the line is open, you guys, welcome. Let's see. Hope you guys are enjoying your Sunday. Let's, let's see here. Oh, someone asked. Someone asked this question. Like the colonizers, are they still in charge? Like <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm not allow you to answer that one. <laughs> that is the question. Just in case you guys didn't catch it. So you want me to answer? Sure, be my guest. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll be a better person to answer this one. <laughs> well, are they still in charge? I, I think, um, you see, they were not, even in history, for instance, in Ghana, it's not like they were fully in charge as they have told us, you know, because they, they on, on, unless uh, along the coastal bit, they were not so much in charge from the forest. The kings and, and those guys were still in charge. And so um, it's only when they signed some bond and they started to colonize, you know, the so-called colonize. But even that was administrative. So uh, in terms of political structure, maybe, I don't know if they are in charge of a government, but we, they have tried. But with the people on the ground, no, we are not in charge of anybody. We are, we are, we are, you know. It's more of uh, the, 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 the way, the information that people have. But a lot of the times they are not in charge i not in ghana i don't think they are in charge that much even though they can be playing something from somewhere we don't know but i think we are fine we are fairly fine yeah a lot of us are really okay here's the next question electricity and internet are an issue in ghana these alone can prevent someone from investing not so much so i don't no. think so what do you think about that no, no, electricity. Yes, we had some problems some years ago, about four years ago. You know, it was the government who was in charge. That their priorities was not the electricity. I remember there was a time that they were playing football and they actually made sure that we had light for the football. Then mm. the next day, they didn't have light. So that was a priority. I think these guys have, <laughs> have fairly done well with the management. Even in the midst of COVID, we can still see that we have, we have largely, we have, they even tell us that they have access electricity internet is expensive but it's not a problem it's, it's the, it's the, it's, i think data is expensive which government uh, probably should look at but it's, it's there. we are using data here actually i'm using uh mtn and there's vodafone as well there's fiber here so largely if you have been here you see that it's not as this that much yeah i've been here for over a year now and so i mean you don't see me like running and i mean i've had my ups and downs you know mm. but um as an entrepreneur nor by birth, mm -hmm. we are risk takers and mm -hmm. um, we've learned to ch just kind of go with it, you know, and just mm -hmm. not fear the unexpected or the unknown. We just learn to adapt, you know. So we have someone here, Didi. Hi. Didi, Hello. welcome. Hello. Can, can you hear me? Hello. Hello, welcome. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, feel free to, to ask your question to Kwabana. Yes, hi. Yes, um, we can thanks hear you. for letting me join. Yep, thanks for letting me join. And my question is specifically for the IT and computer industry. I know that there is a lot of opportunities in that, but would it be okay if you kind of explain the specifics, what's actually in demand and what can we provide? Because I do work in IT and I just wanted to figure out what are some things people really need besides what they already have. You said you're in the IT profession? Yeah. Kwabana, did you hear her question? <clears throat> yeah. But IT is very broad. If 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 I may know her expertise, which kind of uh, IT okay. expertise? So I'm yeah. so I'm a field service tech. I work in the power plant, and okay. um, I basically do hardware stuff. So like let's say stuff like replacing motherboards, replacing hard drives, anything that has to do with repairing the computer and mm -hmm. client issues with software. So if they're having an issue with their applications or like. If they need anything done, I'm usually there to help resolve some issues. 
after an IT update is pushed? Okay. What I know is most of these industries, they, they depend on uh, independent IT companies to take care of their, you know, let's say the, the bank, for instance, the IT department, sometimes mm -hmm. they have just one technical person, but any major, major things that they do, they outsource to other IT companies. So you can form a company and sell the service to some of these. It's likely that somebody else is there, but there's always an advantage that you have. So mm -hmm. it, it, going there as an individual uh, to big corporations will be a problem. But mm -hmm. going there as an entity where you show them your expertise uh, and the projects that you have handled, it's likely that you will get somebody to give you, uh, you know, a fair shot. Yeah. So it's there. It's a cross board. It's there. Yeah. It could be. It could be. No, I was saying thank you. <laughs> ah, okay. Perfect. All right. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I want to add something to that. Oh yeah, yes. I want to add something to that. Um, because we we because we come from a, a more uh, entrepreneurial background, I was just thinking like from what I've seen, like you said, usually companies that have these sort of techniques or, or expertise, they're contracted. So I, I'm, I wouldn't say that she needs to adopt that ideology of I need to start my own business, but possibly partner up with Ghanaian and actually contract themselves out to these banks. <laughs> that That is what I see as an entrepreneur coming from the diaspora, you know, like, wait a minute, you're, you're an expert at this. Why not mm -hmm. you? develop this and bring this service or start a company where you're doing the repairs. Because as an Apple user, I have to go all the way to Accra to get my stuff repaired, to purchase my products, you know, because I'm accustomed to their platform, you know? Um, there's a small, there's a small, uh, what do you call them? A reseller here for Apple, but they're all refurbished and it's sometimes very difficult, you know? So think about that as a customer, I'm thinking like, wow, I have to go all the way to Accra, you know? And so for one? someone who's an is entrepreneur, that? like a very key. Okay, is that uh, the one at Accra Mall? What'd you say? Is that the one at Accra Mall? Uh, oh, okay. Okay. All right. Sorry about that, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Are we there? Okay. Yes. I was just going to say, as a keen observer, um, a keen observer of certain businesses, I'm like thinking, well, I kind of lost my thought, but that's a, that's something that I would look at, like, what? Okay. Either I can go establish this business and hire someone like her. You understand? Or I okay. would develop it myself. You get it? So yeah. that's why I was, I was just saying that um, there's someone else here, Jude. Um, hi, can you guys welcome. hear me? Yes, thank welcome. you very much. So uh, thank you for having me on, for allowing me to talk. So I've been following you for quite a while, yes. So um, I'm really uh, a big fan of everything you're doing. Thank so you. uh, congratulations uh, for that. And uh, to Kwabena, it has been great listening to you. It has yes, been sir. quite insightful. And my question, uh, it concerns the uh, healthcare industry, right? So I was just wondering in Ghana, what's the situation with regards to uh, clinics like family medicine clinics or um, primary health care? And how easy is it for uh, diasporans who are not Ghanaian to become licensed and then set up their own practice in, in, in Ghana? And um, having done that, are there any obstacles with regards to the Ministry of Health? Um, yeah, that's 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 basically the question. Wow. Okay, thank you, Jude. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, what I've seen is uh, I've seen some few uh, hospitals which have been built mm -hmm. by experience. I actually saw one video. We have been to that hospital before. The Wadamaya video. 
as well. So if if um, what I know is they have regulated Ghana Health Service is in charge of that. There are so many clinics that you know they you have to show their location. They come, they assess it, and then they give you the go ahead. So it's more of applying. They may have different different you know maybe requirement for for yourself. But I, I even know business people who set up hospitals. They may not technically be uh, doctors, but they still have hospitals that they have employed doctors to work with. So it's open. They may have their own regulations, but I don't think there's any anything that will prevent anybody to provide that service at all. Okay. You may have Thank you. Idea and my my way. second a follow up question then would be because I've been I've been following the plight at uh, times of Ghanaian doctors, but mm -hmm. if you are not in the system, it's difficult to know what the truth is with regards to um, whether they are satisfied. Uh, with the way um, the government remunerates them or whether they have opportunities available for them as entrepreneurs. So I don't know, is it an issue of they, they are not entrepreneurial and they don't want to set up their own private practices? Or is it actually that there is not enough remuneration? You know, that, that would be hard to believe given that like, everywhere in the world with healthcare, you, 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 it's, a, it's a huge um, a business that that you always get remunerated no matter where you are. So I, I'm always concerned when I see a lot of the Ghanaian doctors saying, oh, you know, or healthcare workers that there's not enough pay, there's not enough, you know, but the business is, is necessary almost. <laughs> okay, so how can you not be making it when, <laughs> when the resources for your business are, are going to be, I mean, eternal in a way, right? That's right. Now that's a very uh, uh, that's a very uh, relevant question. That's a very important question that you ask. Um, what I know, I have some few friends who are doctors. Mainly, they depend on the government for employment. A lot of them depend on the government for employment. I've asked some of my friends, why don't you set up your own hospitals? Yeah, is the, is the capital. I think that their training is so much opposite anything entrepreneurial or business. So that's why very few of them. Are able to develop themselves to see opportunities in business in terms of the healthcare, the very area that they are. You know, so I think that a lot of them are just going to just look for job. A few of them who have been able to step aside and and dead and and you know they have their own hospitals. And I think in terms of money, they control a lot. So it's those who mainly depend on the government. And I know that the government may not pay them that much as they want. You know, politicians pay themselves. The, the rest of us, they leave us alone. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> so I think that in terms of salary, it may not be much. Maybe the very top. But even that, if you compare it with what the other people make, maybe. But if they dare to step, step, step out and start something, I don't think um, I have a friend who has a radio something uh, where they go to do the scan and the test and the figures come that come from the setup the salary is nowhere close you know so in terms of them in terms, in terms of them stepping out and taking up a business uh, nobody stops them but majority of them are being coaching to just wait for the job thanks a lot can, can I more squeeze in one more question <laughs> please go ahead yeah so um how open are Ghanaian healthcare workers, that is nurses, physicians, uh, personal support workers, in joining a business that is um, introduced with a certain template? Like, are they are they open to to working with diasporans who would set up industry in Ghana, and would they be open to having almost like a breaking in education? to help them maneuver um, within the, 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 the business that you want to, to create in Ghana with, the, I would say, a melange of uh, what the Western philosophy and then the Af Af Ghanaian or African philosophy. Um, okay. would, would the youth who are graduating from these institutions be ready to, to, to work with somebody who's coming from, from, from abroad? Okay. I think in terms of the, the, personal, the personal level, the individual levels, a lot of them will embrace it. When you mm -hmm. deal with the, the various associations and, and, and uh, their groups, that those people always, as usual, everywhere, they, they become, they, they, have a that they, ha they have a turf that they have to protect, you know? So they don't is easily, I, I assume that they will not easily welcome. 
you. But then once it's something new, you go through some few challenges. If you stay, you, you bring it on board. I think majority, and you also meet people who will think like you, who actually will also hold you and go through all that you have to go through to bring it. So uh, with government setup, you can meet anybody who will just say no. But you also meet somebody in the same government setup who say, come, let's do it. And in terms of individuals, they are open. I can tell you, Ghanaians are very welcoming. They want to work with you. Uh, yes, no, guys. Okay, so it, it's, it's this one is supposed to Oh, excellent. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. Uh, uh -huh. Yes, first of all, for bringing Kwabena on. And then thank, thank you, Kwabena, you. for, for, for all thank this information. It's been priceless. Is there a way thank to you. to contact uh, Kwabena? Uh, yes. Any yes. Yes. His contact, yeah. the comment, I'll, I'll his, his, his the contact comments, is in the description, but you will give it? I will give my number to you. You put it there. They can send me WhatsApp. Anybody who wants. Ah, okay. It's in the description. All right. Yes. It's All in right. the description box. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Eh? Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you, Kwabena. Thank you. That was, thank that, you. Was, that was great. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. I just want to add something to that. You know, as far as the um the support of of different trades and and whatever your profession is, one thing that I've noticed about Ghanaians is that they're depending on what their background is, they love to network, whatever it is, they love to network. So even with the, the diaspora, right? So within the health, see someone just said right now, I'm in the healthcare and let me find her. She says, thank you for that question as I am in healthcare and was curious. And someone else said something regarding radiology, I would love to support. So if there's some sort of network created, you understand they would support one another to either build and or establish a clinic or, you know, so that's why I promote the entrepreneurial aspect because um, if you look at all of the independent healthcare facilities here, they're really nice and um, they're independently funded by those who may have moved from abroad, you understand? So there's a, there's a need for, everything here that's one thing you guys must understand there's a need there's a market for everything <laughs> you understand there's so many different backgrounds and nationalities and all of the you know it's a melting pot of just everything so don't ever think like Ghanaians are just like just at the market sitting every day no they're very professional in so many different ways you guys come on sure. so i say the sky, the sky isn't even the limit you know, if you are if you're into engineering, I mean, if you're a doctor into computer technology, it's available for you. But we're, we're encouraging you to bring those skills and that mastery and be a leader and become yeah. a leader. Yeah. You know, oh, Kwabana, we have people lined up for you. Truth is here. Welcome. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> What's up, BS? How are you doing? We, we have so many. I know that voice. Welcome. Know that voice. Huh? Welcome. How do you know that voice? I've never. This is my first time to ever bump into you. How do you know this voice? Yes. I know that voice. No, you don't know his voice. <laughs> How would you know my voice? I've only met you today. I know that voice. I'm huh? listening to I've, the frequency. I've only met you today. I've only met you today. Huh? Huh? Check it out. I've only met you today, and I'm proud of you. You know what you're doing with brother Yoko? Huh? Very proud of you. Huh? You tell him I'm very proud of him. You know, I know it's obviously tough. You're doing two sides of the go. You know, yeah, you got to go back and forth. But you're doing really well. I like your plants. Thank you. Which is really good. Well, now, do you know who I am? <laughs> do you know who I yes, am? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Almighty God. No, no, that's not me. <laughs> that's someone else, man. That's someone else. <laughs> Listen, when, when am I getting my chicken, my goats, everything? I know huh? you. I know you. <laughs> huh? You tell my brother I want my chicken, my goats, everything, man. You know? We can't, right. we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't just sit there and be in laws and not get paid. Yeah. Huh? Right. So, yes, yes. What did I want to say, by the way? I forgot what I wanted to say. It jumped out of my head. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, yes. Uh, are you are you getting any roads going to your, 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 you know, your Bonsu village, are you getting any roads there? Is there a road roads? going to be constructed? A road, a road, yeah. a street. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, yeah. Okay, then. Well, I'm really proud of you, then. Okay? Listen, Thank stay you. safe. Stay okay. good. Thank and obviously, you know, I'm rooting for you back here. You know, I want Thank all my goats, you. my chicken. So the more better you guys do, the more chicken and goats and things I get. Okay? 
Thank and you. <laughs> by the way, everybody, <laughs> now this is for everybody watching. I want you to go Google the man who inspired the story of Hotel Rwanda. Go find out what's happening to him. The man who inspired the story of Hotel Rwanda by Don Chido. Remember Don Chido, the story man? Go find out what's happening to him. Okay, go Google find out. Otherwise, I'll leave it to that. I like you all. Thank you. Peace and bless. All right. My good son, All right. Okay, let's see here. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Okay, we have one more here, Victoria. Hello, ES. Uh, hello, Corvina. Um, very nice to see you guys. Uh, I have so many questions. Um, I just watch and take notes, and I, I hope to learn. Um, one of the things I have learned is that you should have contacts on the ground. You should, you know, uh, fellowship with uh, uh, with different um, uh, Ghanaians, or you know, depending on which country you're in. But um, I did have a question that uh, was based off of what Jude just um, talked about with healthcare because of my background with nursing. Uh, so if I have, if, I, if I'm an RN and I'm interested in uh, starting a wellness center, uh, I was just wondering, like he was asking, um, how easy is it to set up shop? Um, um, and again, this is just without doing any particular research on it. This is just something I was thinking of and he kind of sparked that um, interest in it for me as well. If you're starting a wellness center, uh, how interested are people in uh, having that type of access? Uh, so it wouldn't, it, it would be doctor based, um, meaning, uh, you know, uh, just as we do in the States, uh, a doctor would review cases and that sort of thing, but the actual care is coming from the wellness center. Uh, are, are people open to that? Like, what are they looking for as far as healthcare uh, and places like Ghana. Okay. Well, yes, what did you answer? <laughs> you, you this is something. very... I'll add something this is very, it. Okay, this is very technical, but generally, I mean, generally what I know, I, I'm not in the health sector, so, uh, yeah. but some of my friends work there. I think they are, they are much open, I mean, to to almost everything that you bring, they they just you just have to go through the regulations. Um, Ghana is not that much combative; it's, it's not stopping anybody from. Yes, you you once a while you meet somebody who just you know frustrate the process, but <laughs> generally they welcome people. Okay. Indians, Indian hospitals here, Chinese health health centers here, everybody who you know they just have to regulate them. So I don't think there's any special reason that any diaspora cannot do that. You meet individuals who have had all kind of terrible experiences, but we have also had a lot of terrible experiences. You know, you just have to, it's just as it's entrepreneurship. So uh, if you want to start something like that, just go be for that. But there is not any official thing to stop anybody from doing anything at all. That's the general answer that I'll give. But if I can give you somebody in the sector, you can ask them, uh, you know, specific questions as to what you want to do in the sector. Okay. That's I would like to add, add something mm -hmm. to that. Um, okay, when it comes to natural health care, uh, you know, I notice um, whenever I go visit the chief, they, they cut the television on. And I, I kid you not, there's like so many ads for natural medicine. But one thing I notice is that many of them promote Chinese medicine, you know, like, oh, I have this Chinese herb that you'll love. It'll help you with this, your woman, this, this, you know, and we laugh and we laugh. And I'm like, why do they promote Chinese medicine when all of the medicine is here? You know, right. so I also know of a, a diaspora. Um, I, I don't know what region she's in. Her name is Dr. Oh, what is her name? Dr. Sharita. She is a natural wellness doctor or, or, or herbalist. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, if I'm not mistaken, her father had an office in Compton, California, and it's, it's like a network that they have. And she's been here for many years. 
So she's someone you might want to reach out to because she's been here for years working within the community, healing people naturally. Okay. okay. So um, also um, I, I know that um, One Africa has certain modalities that they promote as well through aromatherapy, massage therapy, and things of that nature. As far as um, any other medical practices with offering like herbal tonics and stuff like that, Dr. Sharita would probably be the best person to go to that I've, that I've heard of who's official, who's been here for a long time, who's actually known is legitimate, you know, and, and has been successful with that. And I, and I personally would love that because I actually was looking for all of the herbs that I used to use in the States and I couldn't find them because I don't know the names of them. So can you imagine like what education you would bring, you know, as far as like, I mean, are you familiar with Dr. Sabi? Yeah, of course. <laughs> From the States. Dr. Yeah. Sabre. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just something, you know, on that level um, is not really known here. You know, you'll have like a local traditional doctor that has kind of sells some like noni juice and stuff, you know, but not like the stuff that we really want, like cascara sagrada to clear you out and this and that, you know, now, um, if you want something more like modernized, you can do that because there's a market for it. Because remember, there's people like me that live here. <laughs> right. <laughs> And, and and I was used to purchasing certain things. I want to. I know. I know what herbs I need. And so it would take someone from that particular culture to come and bring it and say, "Hey, hello, I'm here. I'm in Kumasi, or I'm in Cape Coast. This is what I. Say. I can ship it to you. Right. You know. So, so yeah, it's so not a different question. Situation. That leads to another uh -huh. question, though. Yes, because because later. Yes. There's uh -huh. this guy. His name is Ohineba. You can you can Ohineba. search on him. Or Hineba uh, uh, Herba or something. He's, he's, he's into that. He's into what we just talked of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or Hineba in Timber, you can see. Or Hineba Herbal? Or Hineba, or Hineba, O H E N E B A. Or Hineba oh, okay. uh, Clinic or something. Okay. Like that. He's into the natural uh, stuff and he, he, he's really great. So you can search on him. And what, you know what region or area he's in? He's in Accra. Oh, he's about in Tim Berma. Oh, Hiniba. Okay, thank yes. you for that. Okay, Victoria, yeah. oh, what were we going to say? Uh, you guys are sparking more questions. <laughs> so, regarding the, the uh, herbs and 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 natural uh, uh, remedies, um, how? So, so I did have the thought that I could um, have a farm. And grow certain herbs and 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 whatnot uh, to export to that to diasporans around the world uh, again for natural remedies. So that that's one idea. Um, another thought that I had, and this is totally different, and I don't mean to, to take it off of natural um, uh, therapies, but uh, another thing that I was thinking was a need when we were talking about uh, shipping and. Uh, it, what is the need in Ghana, especially, for warehouses, uh, just to have storage spaces for shipping goods and that sort of thing? Um, and when you were talking about Jumia's place, you were talking about um, Tomatom. Uh, just again, a, a place to house goods. Um, because if I'm going to have um, uh, land, um, it could be uh, strategic and it could be placed in you know, I could place a warehouse somewhere where it's needed uh, for that, for the distribution of, of goods. Uh, so that, that's another thought. Uh, Quibi and I just wanted to kind of put that in there too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you can build your own warehouse. Is that what you say? Yes. 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 You can build your own warehouse and, and connect with the shippers. You can do that. You can also start the same, like your own farm yes. and, and move them as you want. Uh, that is a business. That's a big one. You are you are you are growing your own herbs, and you're moving them to your own warehouse, and then you move it from there. Yes, that's a big one. Yes, I'm yes, I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be, it's already exciting. I already made my plans, so uh, I appreciate mm -hmm. the feedback. Uh, I will mm -hmm. look into uh, the information that you shared. Um, I'm seeing the, the comments have a, a wonderful resources as well. So mm -hmm. uh, thank you guys. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day.
Okay, Corbina. Okay, we have another one. One more. <laughs> Welcome, I Ruti. Oh, your volume is low. Can you crank your volume up, son? Hello. Uh oh. Can you hear me better? I guess I have to wait. Can you hear me better now? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear a bit. It's always me. <laughs> I, Rootsy, are you there? Yes. Hello. Okay, you can't hear me now. Mm. Hello. Uh -oh. Well, I tried. Um, no, no, go ahead. I can hear you. Mm. Let's see. Yes, hello. Okay. You know what? I'm, I've been noticing that what we're looking for is networking. We, we're looking for network structure. And it's been a fact that um, in the archives of a lot of the, um, the Vietnamese and African relations that we're talking to one another, but we, we, we don't have a network of, uh, um, of, of, of doing business, business to business network. Actually, when I go to, uh, like, what am I is, um, Okay, sorry about that, guys. Your volume. So, what I've been doing is creating a, a, a mind map of business to business, okay? I saw one gentleman said something about having a patchy business. Um, and then there's also a, a doctor name, I think her name is... Uh, Doctor, how I forget how to say her name, but um, she has a class on um, business network. Oh, hold, hold on one second. I'm sorry. Please bear with me. Your volume's too low. Your volume's too low. Yeah, can you speak into the speaker? You know what? I'm, I, I'm yes, it, yes. Come closer to the speaker. Yes. Can you hear me yeah. now? Much better. <laughs> so I don't know what I did, but yeah, we need you oh, much closer. You speak into the speaker. Okay. Okay, I got an old laptop, sorry. <laughs> oh, it's a dinosaur. Okay, go ahead, just speak into the speaker. We're here with you. <laughs> okay, okay. What I've been noticing that, I'm looking in the comments, is that we're a lot of entrepreneurs trying to connect. The diasporans and the Africans there on the, on the motherland, and um, what I've been doing is kind of um, mapping it together, mapping resources together through video. Okay, I, I saw one guy, he was talking about having a taxi company, um, and uh, somebody had questions about import, export, but we need a database that we can just refer to. Um, I thank you so much, uh, brother. I, I, probably, I don't want to say your name wrong, but you're really giving us a lot of meat right now. <laughs> and we need to, we're so used to learning in the format of a classroom or on a, a index or a workbook. So um, I think we're at the beginning stage of this. So I just want everybody to um, to hold on. You know, um, we're all ready and we're all here and we're all together and we're going to come together. That's right. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So I she's talking over the network. Yes. Huh? Mm. Okay. She's talking over the network. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you for calling in. Yeah. All right. Kwabina, do you have any? Oh, we have someone else here. Okay. Hanan, your your device is not connected. If you can connect that, we'll, we'll take you as the last caller. I don't see any more questions. Let me see. Well, if you were asking about the herb, Angela, it's called Cascara Sagrada, but I would recommend... When it comes to these herbs, they're not meant to be taken alone. You have to like compound them. Okay, I think we caught up with the questions. Okay, great. Hanan, if you can connect your device, we can get you on. Okay, they left. 
Okay, Kwabanad, do you have anything else you want to share with us before we wrap it up? Because um, this has been oh. really insightful. I've learned so much. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I thank you for. And we've taken up so much of your time. You guys, he, he's, he also has. Okay, sorry about my service. It starts like, oh, you've been on too long, ES. That's what it's telling me. So <laughs> forgive me, you guys. Yeah, it's like, okay, I can't hang out anymore for the day. <laughs> okay. So I was going to say yeah. before we start stripping, you guys, please remember to check the description box for his links, his information. He even has a book there that you can test out. It's really good, you guys. Oh my gosh, I love your perspective because it's right in alignment with how I think. You know, even though I'm from there, I get it. I, I totally get it. Okay, what else? Um, his links are there and he's also uh, on YouTube. So his, make sure you subscribe to his channel. Okay, so you can close it out, Kwabana. Yes, close it out for us. Teach us, give us something. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you hear it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. And uh, people that- This was really great. Meet. I said, Abby, this was great. There are people that you meet, they have good heart, they have strong minds, and they are tough. And you are one of such people. You are one of them. And we thank you uh, for everything that you do. We actually appreciate it. Uh, and you should know that. <laughs> you should know that. You should know that. So. Uh, so we, have, we, have, we appreciate all the efforts, all the input, and um, the, the even the, the first interview. Okay. I appreciate. Okay. So I was my my little service wasn't acting right. I don't know. If Can you hear me okay? Yes, I'm here. Okay, sorry about that. The network, okay, I've been on for almost two hours, so they're letting me know. Okay, so <laughs> once again, <laughs> please check the description box below. You'll see all of his contact information. I've even attached, it was okay to attach your WhatsApp connect, right? Yes. For consultations. Okay, okay. okay. and any, make any, sure any you please. Okay. Make sure you compensate for his time. Momo donations are suggested. I always no, say no. this on my own. <laughs> no, the reason why I say this, the reason why I'm saying this, because you would not. <laughs> because that's how my name no. is. Listen, bear with me, bear with me. Because listen, people will zap you of your time and your energy. So it's, it's exchange. You give a great wealth of information, stuff that I didn't know, you know, stuff. Oh, so we have to, even if it was a bag of oranges, do you understand what I mean? It's just about energy exchange. And that's yeah. what I mean by that. Okay. And so, but he's, he's not well. saying you have to give anything, you guys, it's always me. I'm the one that does that. Like, make sure you, you know, because when we're dealing with, with things that are valuable, we must cherish it. You guys get it? If it's something that's very valuable, you must, what is it called? It's called reciprocity. So that I'm into that reciprocity. Okay. So, um, be sure to, it's not a donation link. No, it's this for those who might be in the neighborhood and, and you can use mobile money to send. His, his information is in the description box. So if you need consultation, you wanna speak with him, you wanna to subscribe to his channel. I'm telling, this is one of my, he's one of the team members. I'm giving you guys, this is the guy right here, okay? And his lovely wife. I mean, they're just such a great team, you guys. So, I, you know, I don't typically bring people on here unless I'm just like, this is it right here, you know? All right. <laughs> so um, thank you, Kwabana, for coming. Thank you thank so you. very much. Thank you really you. helped a lot of people today. And so thank how you. they're going to pay you for all of this insight, they're going to come on over and subscribe to your channel and see mm. you on your radio chat tonight. He, he also does thank radio you. segments. So be sure to tune in to that as well. You guys show some love. He really helped us a lot today. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So, 
for Thank sure. You. So you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you next time. All right. Bye-bye for now, you guys. Take care. Peace and blessings to you and your family.